I'm going to be brutally honest about something. While making this series, I had to pick and choose which animal groups were interesting enough to fill an entire 5 to 10 minute video with fun wacky facts. And as you may expect, not everyone made the cut. But while I lacked the skills to create an entire show about each of these obscure phyla, they still deserve recognition and appreciation. So that's what this is. We're gonna meet the 15 animal phyla that are generally ignored, even by me. But who are these 15 forgotten phyla? What did they do? And where am I? We'll find the answer to all those questions and more as we continue exploring the Tree of Life. First up is Phylum Placozoa. Ever wonder what happens if you put pancake mix into the ocean? Placozoans are thought to be the simplest animals on the planet. Like an amoeba, Placozoans continuously change their external shape. Unlike amoeba, they're multicellular, making them true animals rather than protists. Moving on, Xenocolamorpha, a group of simple, marine, worm-like animals that just reached the status of phylum in 2011. Most members of this phylum live between grains of sediment on the ocean floor, eating small organic particles, but some are also parasites. Genetic research into these supposedly simple animals has shown that they descended from much more complex ancestors. As the son of a doctor and the grandson of an engineer, I can relate. Next up is Phylum gastrotrica, the adorably and accurately named hair bellies. It makes sense to name these 3 mm long aquatic animals after the long, hair-like cilia covering their body since they use them to move, to sense their surroundings, and can even create a small current to lead prey into their mouths. I've attempted these things with the hairs on my belly, and so far, no luck. Hey look, a jawworm! Meet Phylum Nathostimulida, redundantly translated to jaw mouth. These outstanding little beasts switch things up by keeping their mouths under their heads, right around here. The mouth is armed with a pair of silly little jaws that they use to scrape fungi and bacteria off of the seafloor. I expected an animal with the name Jawworm to look a little bit spookier, but hey, that's what Phylum Catognath is for, am I right? Better known as arrowworms, these little freaks are a major component of plankton worldwide, and the most voracious predators on this list, subduing their prey with tetrodotoxin, the same neurotoxin that's found in pufferfish. Fins allow the arrowworm to dart through the water like tiny fish having a panic attack, using muscle movements that are among the fastest in the animal kingdom. They also have this bad habit of becoming infected with giant freaky viruses, which I imagine to be a bummer. Okay, this next one is pretty weird because it's an entire phylum represented by only a single described species, Phylum Micronathozoa. That species in question is Limnonathia mayerskai. A teeny tiny guy measuring just one tenth of a millimeter, it was discovered in Greenland in 1994. Since its discovery, this species has also been found in Antarctica and the British Isles, which is why they're so commonly observed wearing little scarves and hats. Now hold on, is it that time already? Is it Parasite O'Clock? Prepare your proboscis for Phylum acanthocephala, the spiny-headed worm. These animals have an irreversible proboscis covered in spines, which they use to attach themselves to the gut wall of their host. Although they're not closely related to tapeworms, they share the trait of having no mouth or digestive system, absorbing nutrients directly through their skin. If you're wondering if these worms are able to infect humans, the answer is yes. No jokes here, I just wanted to give you something new and exciting to worry about. Luckily, members of Phylum Mesozoa only infect marine invertebrates. There's some controversy over whether Mesozoa should be split into two different phyla, but I'm not about to get in the middle of any hot-button debates. One thing we can say for sure is that these worms are small and simple, their entire body being made of just 20 to 30 cells. Within this phylum is class Rhombozoa, whose members are exclusively found in the kidneys of cephalopods, referred to by experts as squidneys. Speaking of animals that live inside other animals, meet Phylum Cycliophora, 
who spend their entire lives attached to the mouths of lobsters in the North Atlantic. They don't hurt their lobster hosts. They simply attach themselves to its bristly mouth parts and filter feed on bacteria and food particles, leaving the lobster with minty fresh breath and an endless supply of new friends. Get ready to bow down because Phylum Entoprocta comes with a built-in crown of tiny, teeny, tiny, tiny tentacles. Within this royal filter feeding appendage is both the mouth and the anus. The name Entoprocta actually means inside anus. Now if there's an entoprocta with an inside anus, is there an ectoprocta with an outside anus? Heck yes there is, brother. Phylum ectoprocta, the bryozoans or moss animals, are found in large colonies over surfaces and on patches of seaweed. They could easily be mistaken for a type of algae for someone who doesn't know what they're looking at. If you couldn't guess from the name, ectoprocta are very closely related to entoprocta. The main difference being that Ectoprocta keeps its anus farther away from its mouth, making it the more civilized of the two. Now I should apologize because this is the longest I've ever gone in my life without talking about worms. So I'll make it up to you by introducing you to Phylum Foranida, the horseshoe worms. These flamboyant and feathery filter feeders live in chitinous tubes attached to the substrate on the ocean floor sticking out a spiral appendage called a lophophore to collect food particles and quickly pulling it back inside of the tube when threatened. Very important to note that nailing one of these worms to the bottom of your horse's foot won't help it run faster. Trust me. <laughs> now at this point you're probably thinking, Jason, why haven't you talked about Phylum Lorisifera yet? Calm down, I'm getting there. Don't rush me. Take a seat. Many animals on this list can survive in environments with very low oxygen, but some members of Phylum Lorisifera live in anoxic sediments at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea, the only multicellular animal on Earth that go their entire lives without oxygen. I feel a real connection to this phylum because we pretty much have the exact same hairstyle. Up next is Phylum Kynorhynchia, the mud dragons. Guess where they live? Go on, guess. They move through their muddy habitat using the spines covering their neck and body, anchoring the spines and extending their neck to pull themselves forward. Let's watch. Hell yeah. Last, but certainly not least, Phylum hemichordata, the acorn worms. Despite their appearance, these are the closest living relatives of echinoderms. Generally worm-shaped, they live on the seafloor worldwide, creating U-shaped burrows with their proboscis. They can be found from the shoreline down to depths of 10,000 feet. These animals come in a huge variety of sizes, from half a millimeter to over 8 feet long. Of all the worms and worm-like animals that we've covered on this show, Hemichordata is the phylum most closely related to our own. Their name even means half chordate. Every single phylum that we've just met, as well as the 17 others that we met earlier in the series, all emerged hundreds of millions of years ago and radiated into every creature that we see living on our planet today. To gain a better understanding of who exactly we share this little blue planet with, we need to dive deeper. So starting next Friday, we're going to meet every major group of animal in the Tree of Life, from jawless fish to great apes and everyone in between. Until then, stay curious, stay connected, and never stop evolving.